It's, it's clearly quite um, an uncertain situation in uh, Caracas right now. How far do you think this could escalate? Well, it depends very much on whether uh, both sides uh, try to have some calm approach to the whole thing and make sure that the violence doesn't escalate. Venezuela is leading towards a violent confrontation. Mexico has already expressed its worry this morning, a few, a few minutes ago, saying, please, we have to talk, we have to have a dialogue to prevent this from escalating. Because unless there is some kind of a dialogue with the European Union has tried to sponsor, together with Uruguay and Mexico, two countries that don't recognize Mr. Guaidó as president, unless there is a dialogue, then they are, we are going towards a, a, a violent confrontation. We mustn't forget that the Chavistas are not only supported by the army so far, but also they have militias which are the people who are going to go to the palace, the presidential palace, to protect uh, Mr. Maduro from uh, the opposition. At the same time, there's a class division in Venezuela. You have the main demonstrations of the opposition in Altamira, which is the upper middle class area of Caracas, which is dominate, has been dominated by the opposition for many years. And you have the poor neighborhoods where uh, Maduro has his support and also the presidential palace. So unless some reasonable voices come now, then Venezuela is leading towards a very violent confrontation, and that would be extremely bad, not only for Venezuela, but also for the whole region. Javier, thank you very much indeed for that. Let's speak to Edis Tianchan, who joins us from Los Angeles. Now, Edis, you've spent a lot of time uh, reporting on the situation in Venezuela, uh, seeing the protests on the streets. Tell us about um, what's led to this, the daily life of Venezuelans suffering from hyperinflation, from food shortages. A lot of Venezuelans have actually left Venezuela as, as refugees. Well, indeed. I mean, it's come to a point where the average uh, Venezuelan, I I Venezuelan's life is very much uh, dominated by desperation. I mean, uh, right now, um, salaries, given the hyperinflation... Uh, we're not having much luck with any of our lines uh, today. I do apologise. We lost uh, Edis Tianchan um, in, uh, in the middle of that. Let's just have a look at some of the live pictures which are going on uh, at the moment. So these are the scenes in Caracas right now. Now, um, uh, as we've been reporting on in the last few weeks and months, we have seen massive protests taking place across the country, uh, both uh, protesters for and against uh, the government. Uh, and one of the situations um, that has made the situation uh, extremely volatile is the fact that a lot of Venezuelans are, are living in poverty. There has been hyperinflation, uh, which means the cost of goods is out of reach for a lot of people. Um, Juan Guaido uh, trying to bring aid in across the border, Nicolas Maduro, um, saying that there was all part of a subversive attempt uh, to uh, und undermine his power. Uh, the US, of course, uh, coming out in support of Juan Guaido. Um, and this is one of the issues which uh, is raising a lot of questions. If I can bring my guest Javier Farhe back again, um, this feeling that this could somehow be being orchestrated by the United States, who've been pushing for Juan Guaido to take over the presidency. Yes. What do you think about that? Well, Reuters published a report a couple of months ago Paul Reuters cannot be considered a friend of Maduro, uh, where they explained how Mr. Guaido had coordinated some of his movements with the United States. That therefore, when he, himself, he proclaimed himself president in February, then the recognition from the US was very, very, came very quickly. So the US has a lot to do. And, and Mr. Bolton, John Bolton, he um, said some time ago in an interview with Fox that it would be very interesting for the US if American oil companies could operate and exploit Venezuelan oil, quote unquote. The quote is there for everyone to be seen. So there's a perception in some sectors that the US is very much interested in Venezuelan oil. But there's a perception in other parts of Latin America that this is about democracy. They don't recognize Mr. Y, uh, Mr. Maduro's election. They don't recognize the validity of the actual process in last year. And therefore, they believe that you know, Mr. Maduro should call for fresh elections. Fresh elections can only be possible as a result of a negotiation between the opposition and the government. There's no other way in which this could happen. It is probably now the moment when the European Union can retake the initiative that they put forward together with Uruguay and Mexico to have a summit to discuss the possibility. The possibility of new elections should be considered, obviously, but there has to be an agreement because 
If one of them don't accept that, then what's going to happen here? At the same time, we have to be, you know, you mentioned the poverty people are living under. Some of the opposition to Mr. Maduro is likely to come within the Chavista movement. People who may believe, and some people do, not many, but many people do, that Mr. Maduro has not followed the legacy of Mr. Chavez. So therefore, there will become some kind of opposition within the United Venezuelan Socialist Party, which is the ruling party, to say, look, Mr. Maduro, fine, we support you, but you really have to do something about the situation. Humanitarian aid has already arrived to Venezuela uh, through the Red Cross, which is something that they refused to do when the Americans tried to do that uh, in February. It has, it's arriving to Venezuela. I spoke to Venezuela, to Caracas, some hours ago, and they were telling me that that Venezuela, that aid is arriving. The government argues that unless sanctions are lifted, it's going to be very difficult for the government to import medical supplies, which has been the problem since 2017. So it's, a, it's different elements which have to be sorted out before uh, we find a solution for this situation. Different issues, clearly. That's right. Um, Javier, thank you very much indeed for that. My Javier Farr.